Hi, I'm Michael Frudenberg, and this is Film Masters. <laughs> On today's episode, we get stuck into making a teleprompter for the Apple iPad or iPhone. The teleprompter will cost around $15 and take about 20 minutes to make. Now don't worry, below in the description area is a downloadable set of plans in a PDF document, so you can print it out and follow along. On a scale to 1 to 5, I'm giving this project to make the teleprompter two Tim Allens out of 5. Uh -huh. Okay, let's get stuck into it. We're going to start making this teleprompter. Now the few of the items that we actually need, two butt hinges. Okay, we're also going to need some screw-in insert nuts. You know all this stuff at the hardware. Some card table stays. You don't have to use them, obviously you can use anything else to brace it, but I prefer to use them. Also need an old tripod, so if you've got one laying around, we're going to use the base plate obviously, so we can screw on the teleprompter. Also going to need two A4 picture frames, now make sure you get the black ones. Wood's preferable, don't get plastic, we want wood ones. Need some felt or carpet, again black, it has to be black. We need some MDF, now the MDF is an inch thick, so just make sure you get that. First thing we're going to do is obviously get the first picture frame and we're going to take anything off the back of it. Okay, so they may have hooks on them, they may have rope on it, they may have staples on it. All that stuff's got to come off. Got to make sure that the whole base plate of it is as clean as possible. So nothing that's sitting there that's going to catch on your hands or your iPad. So on this one, obviously there's a few screws, I've unscrewed them. Next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to get a screwdriver a flat blade screwdriver. Let's get some of these metal tags. I'm just going to lift them up. Use your fingers if you want, but obviously you're going to cut your fingers up. You don't want to do that. So lift them up. Nice and gently. Don't forget you've got glass under it, guys. So nice and gently lifting it up. And we're going to remove the glass and the backing and everything and move it away. So keep the glass. Don't destroy it. We need it. But there's the frame. Next thing, we're going to get the frame we're going to lay it down on the corner of the MDF board. Now, at some hardware stores, they will cut it to size for you. So if you take your frame in and measure it up there, you can buy the timber and ask them to cut it for you. But we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do our own. So just draw around the picture frame so you've got the right dimensions. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my MDF with a G clamp and use a saw. Now you don't have to use a saw obviously, you can use a jigsaw or like I said beforehand, maybe you spoke to the hardware and they cut it to size for you. That's fine. Make sure the MDF is an inch thick. It has to be thick enough so that therefore it's obviously thick enough so we can put that screw through it. I'm just going to cut it obviously by hand and I won't bore you too much. I'm just going to show you just the basic cut of the first one and then we're going to trim it up for the second one in the edit. Now when we're cutting it, and you're cutting it by hand, make sure that you cut past the line. Don't cut up to it, cut past the line like I have done here. Reason for that is it just makes the job cleaner when you cut the other side. So starting from the other side, doesn't matter which side you start from first, it's just a cut. I'm gonna start here and just cut all the way through. And obviously when I get to the end, you can see that because I cut a little bit further off before, it pays off and I've got a nice clean cut. Now that's our base plate, so we're going to get it. Next thing, we're going to line it up and we're going to put a cross right in the center of it. Now the ruler I'm using is a little bit too small, so I probably could have got a bigger ruler or a straight piece of wood. Anything to use to find the center of your base plate. Put a cross there because that's where we're going to put our screw in insert nut right in the center there now the next part of this job is we're going to make sure the drill bit is the right size not too big not too small so as you can see i've lined it up at the very end and you can see that the thread is outside the drill so that's the right size and we're going to use an allen key make sure you got the right size allen key so we can use that to screw it in so the next thing obviously is we're going to drill it in and we're going to drill it good. Now this is something that I should have done before and that was put my hand on it to make sure I held it without it spinning like so. 
Also, make sure you've got a scrap piece of timber underneath it because the drill is going to go straight through to the other side. Now, where the cross is, is the top of the base plate. So, we're going to get that screw in insert nut. And using the alley key, we're going to start screwing it in clockwise. Like so. Now, when we get close to the other side, you want it to be just enough so that the screw in from the base plate from our tripod screws in. So it's nice and sturdy like so and doesn't come off. Next part, it's gonna get our felt. Again, it doesn't have to be felt. It can be carpet if you want, marine carpet, anything from the hardware. It can even be material, but it's got to be black, guys. Okay, so we're gonna uh, simply mark it out so that it fits nicely to our base plate. So just simply using a pencil or a pen or a piece of chalk even, we're gonna use that and cut it. Now the scissors I've got here are probably a little bit too small. You've probably got better scissors than ones that I had available at the time, but obviously the longer they are, the quicker the job will be. And it's just a matter of simply following along the line in which you drew before. Now, the next thing is we're gonna get that base plate again and we're gonna flip it to the right side where our cross is because don't forget the cross is the top of our base plate. And that's exactly where we're gonna put our felt. Now I'm using PVC glue here. And now the PVC glue obviously adheres to anything that's porous, for example, timber, MDF, carpet, felt, and so forth. You can use anything else, guys, you can use Silicon if you want to, you can use uh, super glue. Just use something that would make it stick. And it's just a matter of simply lining the felt or carpet on top and applying pressure to it. You can feel free to put a book on top of it or anything like that, just so you can put weight on it so it sticks. Now I'm gonna use a set of pliers. I'm gonna take these little metal tags out. It's just a matter of grabbing them with the pliers, just give them a little bit of a wiggle and they'll come straight out. Now the reason for this is because we want to make sure again that we've got nothing in there. Now this is going to be the base plate of our teleprompter. So once we've taken all the tags out, just disregard them, throw them straight in the bin, and make sure that the base plate is nice and flat. Now let's get the other A4 picture frame. I'm gonna do the same thing. As the first one, I'm gonna clean up the back of it. Take anything off it, any staples, pull the staples off. And obviously I'm using my fingers here just to bend those tags up. Again, you can use the uh, screwdriver flat blade. And this one, we can lift it all out again obviously, but we're gonna leave the metal tags in and we're gonna leave the glass in. And we're gonna bend the little metal tags back down gently so that they're up against firmly where the glass is, like so. So this is where the uh, text will be reflecting straight off the glass. Now I'm using some black tape here don't have to use it, but I'm just simply using it because I just want to make a cleaner job around the edges. Just want to fold it in and just make it so that it holds the glass nice and firmly and obviously just trim it off. So I'm just going to go all the way around and do that. And I'll do the other side and all the corners and so forth. Now you don't have to use the black tape like I'm saying. You could even use something else if you wanted to, but this is just simply a matter of making sure it looks nice and tidy the glasses. Now if you remember guys, if you just take your time with everything that you're doing here, you'll have a really nice clean teleprompter. Now that that's done, the next thing we're going to do is going to do the uh, base plate. We're going to get the other frame, the one that's got no glass in it, that's got no tags or anything. And we're going to glue that straight on top. So I'm going to use some PVC glue again and I'm just going to put that around the frame. Now 
Maybe I should have used something a little bit stronger. Um, but the whole reason why I use the PVC glue again is uh, because I'll be actually putting a nail onto each corner of the frame. So it's probably a good idea actually to even look at using a hot glue gun if you've got a hot glue gun uh, to use the, to hold the frame down. Now because I use PVC glue, I wanted to use the nails as well. So I just got four of them. Get some nice thin nails. You don't want thick ones. If you get thick ones, what will happen is when you put it through the frame, it'll actually split it. So get some thin ones. They're generally uh, found at the hardware, obviously. If you don't know what ones to get, just simply speak to someone at the hardware and just say, hey, look, I'm putting uh, a frame together and I need some really thin nails. Um, you get them fairly cheap. I had some laying around. So I'm just gonna put one into each corner. So that's the reason why I only needed four of them. And just make sure it's all nice and flush on the corners and it fits well. So obviously I'm just gonna go around and put one on each side. Now that that's done, the base plate is actually done, except for the corners, but we'll clean them up shortly. So getting the other top frame, as you can see, we're gonna have it so it sits up like so. Now, it needs to sit at a 30 degree angle. Now, I'm gonna recycle the screws that were in these frames. So you're gonna need some screws to uh, put the uh, hinges on. But, obviously, these frames had screws, so why not recycle them? So checking out the butt hinges like I'm just showing you there, there is an actual particular way that the butt hinges have to open. They only open at one direction. You'll realize the other direction it won't open up the whole way or won't uh, fold the whole way so making sure you've got the right edges on you're going to screw those in so i'm just going to go through and i'm going to screw each and every one in now i haven't drilled a hole in there i'm simply applying pressure and then screwing the screws in like so but if you want to clean a job it might have been a good idea to get a small drill bit and just start a little hole, not all the way through the timber, just a little bit just so you can put the screws through like so. So there's the first hinge in, and it's simply just a matter of doing the other hinge as well. Now there's all different types of hinges you can get. Obviously I've got really small ones, that's all I wanted. You don't get big hinges. Um, if you get really, really big ones, it just makes the job look a little bit, I guess, dirty. And we don't want that, do we now, guys? So I'm just using the uh, screwdriver here to uh, make a little bit of a start on the screw. And applying pressure again and screwing it straight in. Now, just be careful of the glass, guys, because the glass is in this part. If you put your hand in the middle of it to keep it firm and then push down hard, you're going to break the glass, which is a bad mistake. However, you do have two pieces of glass but let's try not to break it. So the next thing we're gonna do obviously is we're gonna use those hinges and we're going to screw it in to the base plate. So it's gonna open up similar like a door. So just simply line it up. Either use a pencil like I'm using or use a screwdriver to mark where the holes are gonna be. And that just helps you to line up the hinges. So there's the hinges in there, and it's just a now a matter of simply going in and using those other recycled screws that I have to screw it in. Now the screws that I've got here, the recycled ones that came with the picture frames themselves are only thin and small. And that's generally what you need for this picture frame. Anything thicker than that, you're obviously gonna be uh, putting the thread all the way through so just be mindful of that to make sure that the screws themselves are thin. Now don't be too concerned that you're not getting all this down because with this video is a downloadable PDF of instructions and with those instructions we'll include all the bits and pieces that you need. Some of the stuff you may even have laying around the house. You may not need to buy anything. You may not even need to buy picture frames. You might have some floating around. It really depends. So here we go here, as you can see, the hinge is now applied. So now we're gonna use the card table stays. Now again, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, you do not need these. I'm simply using them because I wanna be able to adjust and fold the glass or the teleprompter, because that's pretty much what it's slowly turning into. 
Now you need to make sure that there's a 30 degree angle in between. And again, with the instructions at the very bottom, it's gonna show you a 30 degree angle that you can use for the, your project. I'm just gonna use a drill now, a very small drill bit, just so I can drill through, because I'm gonna be screwing in the screws that came with these card table stays and use those screws to actually screw through and put them in place like so. Now, the fact that I used a drill and pre-drilled makes the job a lot easier when you're putting a larger screw in. So I recommend using a drill and then drill bit to get these holes in, especially in the MDF as well. Again, I'm just drilling it straight through. And like I showed you before at the beginning of the video, when I was uh, showing you the screw in insert nut, with the drill, you gotta make sure that, obviously the drill's not too big, otherwise what will happen is when you screw it in, the screws won't actually hold. Now you may even be able to get away with just using nails for this part, but again, I'm using what came with the kit. Now you can probably just put the one card table stay in there. You may not actually need two of them in there if you didn't want to, but I'm gonna put two in there. Now, what I first did is I made sure there was a 30 degree angle there, and then I simply made sure it lined up, then used the card table stay and screwed it in. But to make the job look cleaner, what I'm doing at the moment is actually measuring the original one I put in and making sure the other side is exactly the same. That way, when it's finished, everything looks nice and tidy. So I'm just simply, again, marking where those marks are, where I'm going to drill, then using the thin drill just to start the screws drilling through. Now the screws again, like I said, did come with the card table stays, so I'm using those. It's probably not a good idea to use a nail near the glass. I wouldn't use a hammer and nail to try and fix the part in. So I'm just gonna drill through like here, and I'm simply just gonna use a screw and put those screws in there to hold the other card table stay together, like so. Now that they're in place, as you can see, the teleprompter has been made. That's the majority of it. Done. Now the last thing I did is I, uh, I got a bit of this electrical tape and I just went around the edges where the MDF is. And the good thing is, it's actually the same thickness as the MDF I'm using. That's about an inch in thickness doesn't have to be an inch thick piece of MDF just make sure it's thick so I'm just simply going all the way around to tidy it up and just to finish the teleprompter off now again you don't even have to use tape in fact if you wanted to you could use the base plate and painted it all black before you even started to glue any of the uh, felt or carpet on top of it and that way you wouldn't even have to use uh, the tape to to cover up the wood but I like it because it matches the frame. Now to finish off the teleprompter, you simply need a black cloth. It goes over the camera and the teleprompter. So no glare gets in through to your lens and your camera. I'm using Teleprompter Pro, which is found in the iTunes app section. I've put a link down below in the description area. It sells for around $8 and I think it's a bargain. And there we have it, making a teleprompter. Now you can start making your own YouTube channel. Now if you want to join the Film Master Club, Simply subscribe to our channel. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.